Good evening, and welcome to the <coughs> balmy February 12th Board of Selectmen's meeting. Happy Abraham Lincoln birthday day, and all of that. With that, for those of you in the audience, in the event of an emergency, you would use the doorway to your left, my right, and go up the rear stairway to um, the rear parking lot where most people normally are in at this time of night when they come for meetings. If for some reason you couldn't travel that way, you could go down the hallway and out the back and come out by the firehouse or up the front stairs through the double doors behind the wall with the clock on it, and that will put you out in front of the town hall. With that said, please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Introductions. I think we'll start on my right tonight. Margaret Novicki. Hi, Judy Williams, and good evening. Ann Dunny, Secretary. Good evening, Ralph Wilkenquist. Good evening, Mitch Goldblatt. Good evening, John Carangelo. Very good. Attorney Marino is not with us tonight. He had hip surgery and is recovering fine a few weeks ago, and so he's taking the night off from, from all this fun and gamesmanship. Okay, public participation. Public participation is for any item that is not an agenda item. We allow up to two minutes on the topic. Is there anybody in the audience that is not an agenda item? No? Yes? I don't know who that young man is over there. Oh. Can I ask you who you represent, just so we I know where you are? I'm a Southern Kansas City University student. You're just here just to watch the, watch the meeting. Welcome. Very good. Welcome. welcome. Mitch doesn't teach you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, at the table, I turn to my board. Does anybody have any statements or thoughts or items for us? Yes, Mitchell. Okay, it's kind of an update from our recycling committee. Um, first of all, many of you have asked and inquired about the shed at the transfer station that got blown over in a windstorm back in November, December time frame, and therefore we've been unable to collect the plastic bags, plastic wrap uh, at the transfer station. Uh, first, let me remind people, because it still continues to happen, if you go to the transfer station and you have all your recyclables in a plastic bag, the plastic bag does not go into the uh, bin there. It will um, uh, clog the, the works at the recycle center and possibly reject our entire load. So please don't put plastic bags in there. But as far as the shed goes, we're working with the Home Depot and we're working with the Rotary Club of Orange to put together a new shed uh, that Home Depot will be supplying and hopefully have it up soon. It's taken a little bit longer than we thought, but hold on to your bags and we'll, uh, we'll get that shed up soon, hopefully. And I thank both the Home Depot and the Rotary Club for their assistance in that matter. Also, uh, April 25th will be our next shredding day. It's just a little over two months away. Um, we are going to, um, once again, shredding day is on a Saturday morning, 9 to noon. Uh, people can bring their items to shred for no charge, although the Rotary Club will be there. They are subsidizing this event and would ask for a donation towards their scholarship fund. Uh, it's all voluntary, but we ask people to please do that if they can. Um, we'll also be collecting mattresses. Um, if you have a mattress, you can bring it yourself, or you can have it picked up. Uh, by contacting Ken Lenz at the Lions Club at 203-795-3906. And finally, the Orange Community Women are also joining us once again for this event, and we'll be collecting all kinds of household items and goods uh, with that. And one last thing is we've had the pink bag textile recycling in uh, operation now, and in the first six months, we've collected over 20,000 pounds of items that have kept us out of the transfer station, out of the waste stream, and we thank the people who have uh, been participating uh, in that program. And those are only the ones that we're able to record, not the ones that have been stolen. Yeah, that's true. 
Uh, we're getting a better handle on that, and people have been getting bags back. If you don't, you know who to contact. I get the calls and the emails, but we'll take care of it. And also, Sylvie has extra bags also in the town hall. So if yes. people need, need pink bags, contact myself or town hall to get those. And we thank people for participating because every pound we keep out of the waste stream is good for the environment, also good for our budget. Question. Uh, do the plastic bags get recycled, or do, they, or do they just get thrown in the hopper? No, the, the plastic bags that are separated at the transfer station and also at places like Kohl's and Home Depot and places like that, those are recycled separately, and they can be recycled separately. They Most of them get turned into uh, plastic furniture products, such as Trex, uh, is the major uh, consumer of those plastic bags and plastic wrap and those things. Um, so yes, it does get recycled. As long as we keep it out of the other recyclables, um, the cans, the bottles, and all that. It's got to stay separate. I, I've, I've been asked by a number of people. Yeah, that, well, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be able to spread that information. Is there anybody else at the table? Seeing none, I only have a very few things tonight. Uh, the first one is, of course, you all are fully aware that the town lost our fire marshal on Sunday, January 19th, 2020, after a house fire call here in town. Uh, unfortunately, his vehicle went off the road, and it was a tragic uh, happening for his family and the town and all of us who knew Tim Smith. So uh, was a loss to all, and the town is moving forward at a snail's pace on that, but it is must move on. Reminder, Monday, February 17th, all town offices will be closed in observance of President's Day. We take one day, not the two. The transfer station will remain open. Um, so, Kim Callahan, if you're watching me, you get the 17th off, okay? <laughs> Look at Joan. Joan's like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, a couple of interesting ones. We're kind, we're kind of fortunate, but people shouldn't forget uh, mailboxes. We still have the worst of the weather yet to come, and the ground is soft. If you didn't put a protector up for your mailbox, you still have plenty of time because we've been having all these 40-degree days, but the worst of the snow is the end of February, and March is always the heaviest, wettest snow. That is the snow that will usually damage mailboxes. The town does not fix mailboxes unless we run them over. So you should protect them because if we get snow, the worst is yet to come. Interesting, since it's been warm out and we've had all these rains, many neighborhoods in town as they were developed, developers put drainage ditches, swales, pathways for water to travel. We've had quite a few people calling the town hall telling us that their drain is plugged or something. So the public works goes out and looking for catch basins. Well, it's not a catch basin. It's a dividing ditch. Most of the time they seem to run along boundary lines between two people's properties and stuff. Those are all private and you need to keep them clear. Don't blow your leaves or rake your leaves into them in the fall. Don't throw your sticks and debris in them. Those were put there when those subdivisions were put in because of water traveling at different seasons of the year. And most of them are kind of obvious, although some of them have grown up with brush and debris in them for lack of maintenance. But those are your drainage swale to protect your property. They're not done by the town of Orange. Uh, a lot of times they do drain into a town uh, waterway or into a catch basin or something. But if they're on your property, they are your drainage weight that you should be keeping clear and maintaining. Um, as you know, we're formulating the budgets. I was up at Amity at the Amity Finance Committee meeting on Monday night. Amity had a proposal. Their initial proposal was a 3.95% uh, budget increase. If that were to happen, um, that was a, a just, a, just this much over a million dollars to Woodbridge, uh, 660,000 in round numbers to Orange, and 200 and some odd thousand to Bethany. Um, I did speak against it. 
um, on many levels. They've repeatedly had surpluses uh, year after year. Last year was a $3 million surplus. Uh, and, you know, the state of Connecticut has put caps on the budgets of the municipalities. It's a 2.5% uh, cap on budget growth. And uh, so I spoke and explained this and some other things and said that I can't live with anything over a 2% increase. And uh, Bethany and Woodbridge agreed. And after some wiggling, they kind of come down to they'll maybe move up a little bit to maybe 2, 2, 2. But we really need to look at what's being done with the money because some things are want, some are need, some are gotta be, but you know, a 4% increase, uh, it's not sustainable. And I mean, Woodbridge, I, I learned at the meeting, their whole budget increase last year was 800,000. And this year, if it went as proposed, just their Amity increase would be uh, just to shy over a million dollars. So, uh, and their mill rate broke oh, the 40 mil level this year that we're in. So. Yeah, so they're all very concerned with that. So a budget formulation is going on. Uh, I've delivered the same message to the Orange Board of Education uh, that has a similar starting number, and we're going to have to work on that because these numbers just aren't sustainable. Um, many people come, have come in angry. They forgot to pay the second half of their taxes. When you get your tax bill in uh, end of June, beginning of July, there's two coupons on there uh, for that. With cars, there's a, it's a one payment. With uh, real estate, it's two payments, and the first payment is due the month of July, and the second payment is due the month of January with a day of grace, the beginning of February. And a lot of people said, well, we didn't realize that. Well, that's why you got two coupons on there. You got to hang them on the refrigerator or something if you can't uh, remember that. But we've, we've had a, quite a few uh, discussions about those uh, this week. Okay, that's all I have. Um, we'll do minutes first, then we're going to make a change here. Uh, minutes, to consider and act on the minutes of the January 8th regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Are there any errors, omissions, or corrections? If not, if there are, state page and paragraph. If not, is there a motion? I'd like to um, make a small uh, clerical uh, correction on page one. Uh, the first paragraph, right before public participation, I think we should say, led by Cub Scout. Pack two nine two two. So it's, it's clear that it's it's consistent with who came later in the day, in the uh, evening. All right, led by the Cub, just by, led by cub. cub Scout, Cub Scout, or Cub, cub, cub Scouts, Scouts from Pack two twenty. Yeah, or Cub Scouts from Pack two twenty. So add Cub. Add Cub. With that, I make a motion to approve. Unless there's any other. Anybody sorry. else, Margaret? No second. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Discussion. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Unanimous. Very good. All right, um, there are several people in the audience tonight, and our old business item is a transfer station item. So is there a motion that we should swap and put new business first, uh, go out of order, and make old business after new business? So move. Second. Okay, any discussion or problems with that? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed, abstain, unanimous. Okay, item number one is to consider an act on request to hang banner to promote Strawberry Festival. Marie sent her surrogate. <laughs> Bob? <laughs> Good evening, Mr. First Selectman and members, ladies and gentlemen of the, of the board. Uh, my name is Bob Sigler, and this evening I'm representing the Orange Congregational Church across the street and as a member of the Strawberry Festival Committee uh, at the church. Uh, Yes, we would respectfully ask if we could hang our uh, banner that advertising the festival the second Saturday of June, in this case, uh, in this year, June 13th, uh, if we could hang it, I guess, for a couple of weeks, right no, after the Memorial Day. Of course, for Day. two weeks. Yeah, after Memorial Day Parade. And the date is, and what will you have there, and what the, are you offering? The date, the this date is, is opportunity. <laughs> the date is June 13th, uh, with the rain date, that's a Saturday, the rain date is Sunday, June 14th. And pretty much anything you can imagine in terms of strawberry treats, pie, jams, sundaes, shortcake, uh, as well as strawberries on your pancakes, if you'd like, uh, if you're of that uh, ilk. And uh, all, all kinds of food, lots of vendors, rides for the kids, uh, and hopefully another good turnout for our red car show. And it's a one-day event. One-day event, that's okay. correct. That's correct. Any questions? Oh, Mitchell? I do. I do have a question, Bob. Yes. Um, if 
and hopefully this is not a case, but if it does rain or if weather is inclement around June 13th, how are you notifying people? How, how would the word get out that that festival has been moved to the 14th? Well, we, what we've done in the past is try to, on the uh, yard signs we put around okay. town, we'll put down, we'll, we'll just put across to a banner that says rain date tomorrow or Sunday, okay. festival Sunday. Uh, we'll try to get to the media as well. That's not always easy. Right. And there'll be people there if, if people do show up to, to let them know that we're going to be running it the okay. next day. Thank you. Hopefully With that, that, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, request to hang the banner from May 26th through June 14th as requested. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. Stay in your nose. Remember, Channel 12 has a camera on that center pole. Somebody right. should reach out to Channel 12 okay. several weeks in advance and put that on their radar excellent good idea right. thank you thank you thank you very much that's the weather cam that's out there when it snows and when it's this that they it shows yeah well it goes all over they can turn it in there so okay item number two to, co <coughs> to consider an act on the request from the orange lions club to waive the facility fee for the use of the high plains community center gym on friday april 24th 2020 for a military whist, and Debbie Hart sent her surrogates tonight for that. <laughs> Takes two of us. Yeah. <laughs> you should explain. You should explain this to them. You know. Name for the and Mr. Zioli. Thank you very much, Board of Selectmen. Thank you for having us here this evening. Who are this, you? Uh, my name is Lawrence Messina. I am Lion George Lesko. And uh, we are here to uh, explain what military whisk is. This is going to be our f the first time we've, we're holding it. It's a, it's a card game. Uh, it's, I'm going to just read it off. It's designed for large groups of people from teenagers to seniors. And uh, it works as the following. Uh, you have participants seated at tables of four. And as the evening progresses, the uh, participants move from table to table to play against a variety of people. Uh, after 16 rounds of play, the players end up at their home table, and prizes are given out to the first play second and last tables. It is a fun evening, and uh, you meet new people as you play. Uh, the Lions will sell tickets at $12 each at the event and also hold a raffle for additional funds. We'll also be serving refreshments and desserts will be provided, and we plan to uh, raffle off uh, donated gifts uh, as a further way to raise funds, which, of course, we uh, give back out to the town. Uh, George will explain the rest of it. This is a fundraiser, and. Morris, we forgot to give a special shout out to uh, oh Lion Oh my gosh, Ann. Lion Ann is here, that's a fellow lion. <laughs> so we're looking for some good support from her, of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, You're as red as your scarf. <laughs> <laughs> I should have warned you, Ann. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization, and all the profit from this particular fundraiser will go to our local charities. Uh, it's called Military Wisp, by the way, because the person who runs it has a whistle. And she acts as a general and oh, blows a whistle. Everybody has to move around, and it's a lot very entertaining. Uh, you know a lot about our local charities. One, a, a new one that sort of ties in with this is the West Haven Military Museum. I highly recommend that the viewers and any of you, mm -hmm. it's over by the uh, just in back of the uh, train station. It's an incredible. Okay. Thank you. The West Haven Military Museum is just an incredible museum. It's one of the best in the state and I dare say in the Northeast. Uh, I've even contributed a couple of knives that my father brought home from uh, World War II. Uh, it's, you owe it to yourself to check it out. It's usually open on a Saturday. Uh, in addition, for those who don't know the Lions, we're a, a nonprofit organization. Our name to claim is Helen Keller, uh, so blindness, Diabetes, things associated with blindness is part of our claim to fame, and, uh, but we also do uh, numerous contributions to local <laughs> charities. The one I always get a kick out of is the Blanket Ferry. Yes, uh, of course. So I'll give her a shout out. And we uh, give out grants to um, any organization that applies. Uh, we have the grants coming up in March. So uh, it's another event we love looking forward to. And we will be paying the janitor that janitorial fee, so just want to make sure you know that. <laughs> if you were smart, you would have asked for the waiver. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, next the time. cat's out of the bag now. <laughs> Unfortunately, can't next ask year. for it. <laughs> Is there a motion to be made to support so this? Second. 
All in favor? Yeah. Looking for. We hope you all okay. can. I, I got one. I got one. I got one thing for the two of you. Yes, sir. Your project is approved. Should you make so, a little bit of money on this, mm -hmm. you're going to go back and you're going to sit in your chairs, and then you're going to listen to the next presentation because the next presentation needs some donations, oh. and it's a really a very worthwhile right. situation for children. Right. Yes. Okay. And I'd like I'd like you to hear. It was brought to me initially by Sue von Robinstein. Okay. She's teamed up. Joan Cattell is with her from Community Services, and I'd like you two to. Hear about well, this sit, program. Sit and listen to it. It's for children. Yeah, well, somewhere along so. the way, maybe we can team up. You never, that would be you a never good, know. Good so idea. Yeah, that's exactly. There you go. <laughs> I already applied for it. That's all right. That, that's all right. Oh, good. You oh, got that. you got to it. But the this way, they, plans can, hear, are in the they works. can hear your yeah. your pitch tonight, which I think is very important. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You guys Thank are you. all set. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Don't go far. Sit in your chair. Item number three is to consider an act on a request from Food to Kids to waive the facility fee for the use of the High Plains Community Center gym on Saturday, March 7th, 2020, for an Al DeCant concert. And Sue Von Robinstein is coming up and is going to explain to you this Food to, for food to Kids program. Yes. Hi. Nice uh, to see you all. Um, I am a volunteer. I live in Milford, and I'm a volunteer at Milford Food to Kids, and I've been doing that for a couple of years now. And through the course of my education with them, I started floating the idea that maybe it was an option or a need in Orange. And the people that I spoke to, Joan and her crew, and um, some of the people at the uh, Board of Ed, and they all agreed that we definitely had a need, probably not as great as the one in Milford, but um, that it was a, a program that we should consider. And then I gathered five of my friends <laughs> to uh, help me in this process. Ooh, sorry. And it's walking. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is where we are now. We have, um, we are a Connecticut charitable organization. We have our certification from them. We do have a tax ID number and a bank account, and we are in the process, which is taking a little bit longer, but I guess on schedule for the 5013C. Um, so by the end of the year, we should have that. Explain it a little <laughs> bit more like you sure. did to me with the lunches that they, and right. or a meal. Right. So the um, weekend, the weekday. And children who um, are in need through the school system may receive free or reduced lunches, and that's great for the Monday through Friday, but when they go home, there may be a shortage of food that's not addressed in any other manner. So what we do, the organization, is we prepare bags of food. They consist of breakfast items, lunch items, and snack items. We package it, we purchase it, we package it, and we deliver it to the schools. They, um, through the school nurses, which is our, our point person at each of the schools in town, um, will at some point in the day discreetly deliver that bag to the child, either by calling them to the nurse's office because they're regular visitors anyway, or by dropping it off into their backpacks when the class is at lunch or the class is at recess so that it's, it's discreet, it's still anonymous. Um, the only person in the school system, aside from the social worker, um, Diane Downey, is the school nurse. Those will be the only people that actually have the names of the children that are receiving the bags. And the organization on our end will just get a number from each of those school nurses as to how many bags to bring to the um, school. I'm sorry, I actually brought copies of this because oh, they did such gets a fantastic one. job. Um, yeah, I think, there's, I think there's eight, so. Right. Yes, those, I have to give a shout out to my daughter's company. They are the, um, the marketing and advertising agency that, that stays with handled yours, all of our publicity. And they came out really nicely. And they did not charge us, so we started with a zero budget. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, when Sue talked to me about this at first, I'm like, well, tell me a little more about it, you know, because I had never heard of it. And she said, well, she's involved with it in Milford and so on and so forth. And um, it was really very intriguing. And I don't know if she thought I was going to say forget it or – something and uh, um, I said no absolutely this sounds like you know potentially a very worthwhile project that we do have some children here that definitely fit into this uh, situation 
Uh, many people out there don't realize that, but we definitely do. Um, so I was really happy, excited about it, and so then she has to come to present to all of you, and uh, um, I think it's a good thing, and they're doing a fundraiser for this. They are, however, open for uh, others that can do fundraising or just make a general donation to it. Um, I think it's really a, a worthwhile program. Thank you. So, with what as Sue has said, Mitchell? I have two questions. Thank you. I have two questions, Sue. Th First of all, I think this is a wonderful endeavor. I hadn't heard of this until we see their packet, so this is this is great. And Thanks. I think I speak on behalf. I'm sure of the entire board of selectmen saying kudos to you for for leading this. Um, first question is, and if you can't or don't sh care to share this, that's mm -hmm. fine. You say here in your brochure that um, it's about seven fifty per child per week, about three hundred dollars per child per year. Right. Do we know, and if you don't feel comfortable saying this, do we know how many children we're looking, you're looking to help support? We have support? a couple of different numbers that we're floating. We haven't received the final numbers from um, the nurses yet, but um, through actually talking to Joan and the um, holiday program, there were ab about 37 children okay. that received gifts through that process and, and food and whatever was put in those gift baskets. And then Diane knows... When I spoke to her back in October, she said, I know 10 children right now. So mm -hmm. um, so potentially between those two numbers, we have put it on Facebook. We do have a Facebook yep. page. And um, we would like anyone who, who – there's no requirements. There's no financial proof. Um, if you – think that you need it or your children could benefit from it, all you have to do is contact your child's school nurse. Um, they'll be added to the list. We don't, um, I said I don't have those numbers yet, yeah. but I'm guessing from the start we're going to be between 10 and 35. Okay. And the reason I ask is just to yeah. try to understand what your goals are in terms of fundraising per year. Obviously there's never enough, but right. just to get an idea. Second question I have is, mm -hmm. so you're doing this through the schools, right. which is great. Mm -hmm. My question then is, obviously the need is year round. So right. how do you handled it during vacations, especially during summer, or is it suspended during those times? So um, when a holiday weekend or a long week comes up, we'll usually do two deliveries, so one on Thursday and one on Friday because we can't overweigh their bags. The children are still, in some cases, small and can't carry 40 pounds of food home. So we do try to supplement um, on a regular basis if, we're, if there's a holiday. Um, truthfully, Milford, where I've been doing this for two years, we haven't figured the summer thing out. The organization is committed to the anonymity. We don't want to know the children, and we don't want to know, we don't want them, their attention brought. And so we haven't figured it out yet. Um, Joan has offered to allow us, you know, for people that are already coming to the food bank, that we can continue to add bags to that for those children. But it, it's not something they've figured out, and I don't have an answer for it either. And if anybody has one, um, we've talked about dropping it off at the Board of Ed, but again, someone's then got to pick it up, and, right. yeah, and that you, does change the circumstance the, a little bit. You lose the anonymity. Right, right. Um, you know, again, I don't. If you if you if you don't mind, every uh, you know the the community service people knowing, then by all means, we'll leave bags there all summer. That's completely well, it's fine. It's up to them. Us. Yeah. So where do you feed your packets? Well. Hi, Plains. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna be doing it up there, yes. probably, whether in the kitchen or in the community services uh, Actually, pa we're using pantry my room. Oh, we're using room? my classroom. <laughs> okay. All right, so they'll be um, doing it yes. in the park and rec, uh, one of the rooms at park and rec, probably the training room at park yes, and rec. Yes, exactly. Is it certain times of the week? Uh, in other well, words, are you looking for volunteers? We will. Um, we have not packed a bag yet. We do start that next Thursday. So the committee and I are going to do the first couple till we get the kinks out. Then I know there are scout groups and youth groups and, and church groups that have offered to come and pack, and then also other community groups. Um, so we'll do that when we get to a comfortable state in, in what we're doing ourselves. Do you have any agreements with some of the larger, uh, like Big Y or Stop and Shop? So Lori Gagne has been all over town. If she hasn't bothered any of you yet, she will be. <laughs> she is fantastic. Um, we do have a lot of um, interest. Um, we've received donations from the Greek Orthodox Church and from Temple Emmanuel. Those were two large um, donations after a meeting at um, oh, the, the for the clergy. Um, and we have some commitments from some other organizations. But 
Orange is kind of tricky because we are a lot of big box stores, so they that stuff has to go up the corporate ladder. Trader Joe's has given us a donation of food. They're not allowed to give money, but they have committed a regular donation of food to us, which is helpful. Yeah. Um, and then Lori's hitting everybody else. I think there's a couple of warehouses, aren't there, around the state, one in Newington and one in Bridgeport, that are also warehouses for food and do you well, have an agreement the, the, food, the food bank in Wallingford, the bank, right. they can purchase at the food bank in Wallingford. It, there's a big scale there. Right. And I forget, it's like a nickel a pound or something it used to be. Okay. Um, friend of Nancy Carrington ran it for years. Uh, I don't know if they've changed, but they built a great new facility yes. right off the highway up in Wallingford. Right. I think so. the food bank in Bridgeport also is up and coming, right? I, think I don't so. know about one there yet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know the food. We do but purchase are, at the, at the Connecticut State Food stuff. Bank. Right, right. right. So, Joan, um, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just want to say that um, any of the residents and families that participate with our food bank or in the holiday programs do remain anonymous to the general public. We obviously have to have their names and um, contact information. So um, we would okay. be happy to help however we can. Um, you know, once we've identified between you and us, um, the parents come to our food bank. It's not usually the children, so we'll remain anonymous in that respect also. Okay, that's Joe Critella from Community Services. They are willing to also join in and help on this for pickup and arrangement with uh, uh, children in need, families in need. Um, so they are open to monetary donations and... Specific food items, and I did include in that list, um, okay, in good. that packet, the actual items that we use. Unfortunately, we are on the higher end item because everything is individually packaged. Yes. So a box of mac and cheese. That's okay. It's different, but I, um, you have a, a Facebook page, did you we say? We do. Orange so, food to kids. So <laughs> those of you that do, those of you that do Facebook, if you could share it onto your Facebook pages, or if you know somebody who does, and. Let's see if we can roll it out a little bit that way, and uh, you know, there's well, a possibility. I, I started that it way on too. Monday, and we have 409 members already. So, excellent. This town is pretty awesome. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. So, but um, continue to share it. So, anyhow, the reason why we've had all this great discussion, she's asked for the waiver uh, there, and so I think that's all good, and I think it'll be a very reasonable reason to uh, do that. And so. I should say, Al Decant is also donating his service for that day as well so um so far we're so moved excellent yeah. 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 all in favor, all in favor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay very good excellent thank you thank okay you. I forgot why she was here I forgot why she was here <laughs> now george do you see why i asked you two to stay <laughs> i think it's good Okay, to consider and act on the request from community services to waive custodial fee and facility fees for the Living Treasure Pasta Festa, which will be on Friday, May 15th from 5 to 8 p.m. at the gymnasium. And they're looking for the selectmen volunteers as normal, and they usually have some other student group, I think, or somebody, uh, the kids that need the, height, the points, I forget what you call it. Community service. Community, community service. service. Community Thank service. you. Um, but they moved it back to... High Plains, see that. because, you know, yeah, it's lovely to go to Racebrook or go to Grassy Hill, which are oh, wonderful or places, St. Barbara's. or St. Barbara's, but the problem is they weren't making any money. So you were all having a wonderful night out, but yeah. the purpose of this when it started was for community services to raise money, and if you remember going back, way back to uh, Joey Ann Byrne mm -hmm. uh, and um, Carol Nardini, they made a lot of money doing this, right. which was the purpose, because that is community services to help others, whether it would be for some funds for Sue's project or our own fuel bank project or our food pantry or programs. And so I said, you know, the goal of this was, yes, you recognize people, which is a wonderful, honorable thing, but it's to make money. And so they did it, and uh, I'm sure everything will be lovely and decorated, and um, 
Is there a motion to approve this? Exactly. Joan, do you want to speak to it? <laughs> I mean, well, there's going to be no argument with this. I want to say thank you, Jim, for giving that wonderful speech, so now I really don't have to give one. To <laughs> well, I mean, I caused it, so I mean, you know, I want to... Second. I, I'll take the blame in case people think it's not as... Uh, <laughs> Lovely. You know? No, I think okay. it's going to be great, um, and I think to get back to the grassroots is is a great idea. So, I do too. Yeah, yes. and maybe we'll too. make a few dollars, and and that's what I'm hoping for. Absolutely. Yeah. Very good. So thank you very much. Thank you. You are welcome. It. Okay, the motion and second are made. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Perfect. There you go, Joan. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hope we got enough room in that gym. <laughs> we'll fit them. <laughs> if we have to, we'll put a few in the cafeteria. We might. To consider and act on the request to approve a three-year commitment resolution uh, confirming the town's particip participation in the Has Waste Central. This Has Waste is for the chemical compounds and things that people, when they're cleaning out their garages, basements, sheds, and stuff, they find old pesticides, herbicides, and what have you, paint. Not even paints anymore because we have our own mm -hmm. thing for paint, but the other chemicals and all. And it's at the water company down on uh, <laughs> that road. Is that? That's not frontage there. Longworth, Long yeah. yeah. Um, so with that said, does anybody Sergeant, have any Sergeant trouble Charles. with that? Just, just that I don't think I received the copy of the um, memo that goes with that. So can you tell us? Oh, yeah, I get that. Did you get that? No. Okay, just real quick. She left it out of yours on purpose. <laughs> she said he's well, not recycling. He already had. He has just, his just own re target. Wait, hold on, hold on. The 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 has waste central re uh, also relies on volunteers. Uh, to help out, it's the Orange Recycling Committee that does volunteer twice a year to uh, to uh, to do this and help out. It is 90 Sergeant Drive. My question really was, and I don't see it here. What do we know? What our cost is for this? Okay, it's billed. I know it is. I just was curious on, as to it's billed on consumption. Right. I don't know what we've spent in the past on that. I'm just curious. I have to say, I've never seen the bill for that. Okay. One. I'm sure Sylvie has, <laughs> or somebody uh, Sylvie has. or John. John's yeah. at home watching this. Um, I don't know if he knows that one off the top of his head. If he does, he'll text me. <laughs> no, do you have the dates? That no, in fact, in fact, it's around this time of year that we get notified from, from the Water Authority. Now, remember, you can bring hazardous waste any, any week uh, between Spring April to, yeah, to the end of October. I think it ends just before Halloween. Um, Saturday, it's when Saturdays from 9 to noon. And the town switch off volunteering to help people. And we don't touch the waste. All we do is take the, the forms, which you can fill out online ahead of time now. Um, and what we do is we work with the Water Authority to find dates that are good for us, which don't, cons don't conflict with the Fireman's Carnival, don't conflict with the fair. And we find ways to, to fit that in. And shredding day, exactly. So, um, but yeah, but you can bring it. You don't have to bring it any time. When Orange is there, you can, it's nice to see people from Orange when we are there, but bring it any time. For those dates. Thank you. Very good, Mitchell. Did we make a motion and a second yet? I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. So, so John Ciferoli texted me. <laughs> oh, he sent it to you? I don't know off the top of my head, but I'll let you know tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. That's yeah, not a number that I would know. Okay, all in favor? Uh, Opposed? <laughs> Staying? Unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> the next one, this, this next one's all Mitch. I got a, it's a resolution. I'm not in favor of it, but I went along with the Madat Cog for it, so. Um, to consider and act on resolution of endorsement regarding the South Central Regional Council of Governments, also known as SCROG, Regional Performance Incentive Program regarding Regional Cybersecurity Initiative and a school waste diversion pilot program. I will tell you, I was in favor of the cybersecurity initiative. Mm -hmm. I was not in favor of the school waste diversion. And as we discuss it, I will we'll explain more. But there's a resolution there, as you say, and there's some information with it um, that tells about both. The reason I don't... Well, Jim, before, before you go, I mean, two things. One yep. is, obviously, this, this moves along with um, the sustainable CT program that's been endorsed throughout the state. Many communities we haven't yet have, have, have become sustainable communities. Uh, I hope we do at some point. 
but quite frankly, you say this is all me. I, this is new to me. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm, not aware, I'm not aware of the program, so I, I guess we, what I'm looking for you to do is to help explain, besides, we did, Ann was kind enough to send us the, um, uh, the brochures that go with it in the, in the literature, but I think it would be important for you to explain what it is and then well, also the, tell us your concerns. you know the part that they're trying to get a grant, yeah. or they're getting the grant, mm -hmm. and one is, you know, the Council of Governments takes on many tasks on behalf of the 15 member communities of our Council of Governments. The cybersecurity one, which I think all of us know here, or you should know how important that is because there's many towns that have been uh, hijacked by um, people in the technology world out there and they'll hold whole towns, um, Com computer systems and all, all their technology hostage and all, and you know some of them want to be paid in Bitcoin, some of them want other things, and then sometimes they'll be released and sometimes they'll not. Um, we're very fortunate in uh, having Paul Mangillo with us that he has really amped up all of our protective uh, areas, and we're relatively good, but you know what? Nowadays, every single day, Three times a day, somebody's coming up with a new way to wiggle it. You know, any of you who have ever been subject to identity theft, I've had identity theft three times. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, you get your computers hacked. You know, you think innocent enough uh, uh, looking at something that seems like a, like a really great program or something. You're, well, it turns out it has a connect to it that lets somebody in the door. So, uh, um, you know, that is excellent. And it kind of goes a little more hand in hand, even with the state, because the state has done more as they try to amp up the uh, technology statewide for everybody. Uh, uh, this is something that, you know, just moves forward. You know, when the kids that are in kindergarten are our age, this would be old hat to them. For us, we're old hats that are trying to learn new things. Um, the second one is the School Waste Diversion Project, and they do have it going in some locations already. But I had a, a couple challenges with it. Number one, they have not, and they're just starting to arrange meetings where they would send this to composting sites to take this, you know, food waste out of the system. That hasn't been identified yet and if you remember you know a lot of garbage companies a hundred years ago started with people going around picking up people's food waste and bringing it home and feeding it at the pig farms which then led into a lot of uh, diseases and uh, uh, contaminations and stuff from locations and not doing it. So then they started boiling garbage years ago. When I went to Yukon, they had a feeding barn and they used to take all the food waste from all the uh, cafeterias all around the campus and they'd bring it down to the pig barn and it was put in a big boiler and uh, essentially sterilized and then fed to the market hogs in the barn at Yukon. And they stopped doing that due to some uh, contamination problems and uh, uh, illness problems related both to, to the livestock and sometimes the handling of this. So they don't have composting spots set up yet and all, but then they brought it to me and said, well, by approving this, that'll be part of the development of the project across the state. We'll be developing composting sites for this. Initially, you're going to have, uh, you know, because it's going to go into a pile somewhere, into a strip trench, you know, above ground where it's piled and let to decay. Well, then you're going to start getting uh, vermin and uh, other inha inhabitants coming to that. So then where do you put it? You don't want it in an urban area. You know, you're not going to be putting it on the community gardens in like uh, the urban gardens or anything because it would be pretty gross. 
And uh, so they, there's a lot of legwork that still has to be done with it. So I will say to support the resolution, but I will report back as they develop on it to find locations for the composting of it. I, I think about over at our farm, you take the spoilage off the silage pile. We have a very large pile of chopped corn over there. We feed the cows. And the spoilage comes off, which is a, on the top of it, pretty mostly wraps, wraps it and seals it, actually. But you can't feed that to the cows. So Christian shovels that into the bucket loader, and we dump it out on the lots, and it rots for compost. There must have been 500 crows out in our field today picking through the disposed of corn material, looking for the kernels that were still good in it there and all. So you think about it, what other kind of animals are going to be coming around, especially in a year like this when it hasn't been that cold? Mm -hmm. Compost needs to go up to like, I think, 160 degrees or more in that pile as it cooks itself uh, to kill all the bad stuff in there. Has to, sometimes it, has, it goes even higher than that. And they have big thermometers on probes that they put in those piles and all to see if it's reached temperature and there's special machinery that they go down and that turns it. You know, they actually, you can see it sometimes with the leaf composting over in West Haven. Yeah. Well, you know, leaves are, and leaves and that sort of debris are one thing. When you start talking food waste, that's a whole nother area. It's kind of, we're kind of going backwards a little bit, but they do it in a lot of European nations and other places. I mean, uh, you know, there's some places that have zero waste because of composting and separating of their glass and separating of their plastic and their cardboard and all. So we're kind of going backwards but forwards at the same time with that one. You're, Jim, you're talking about just, you know, the compost thing. I mean, the energy generation thing is huge, too. They there's have, there's that, a plant that was built up in Southington, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and that's exactly what they're doing is taking all the hospital and whatnot waste and turning it into energy. Mm -hmm. So if if you're delving into this further, um, that would be, I think, a question to bring up as to is there an alternative instead of just doing an open compost, can this then go into an energy, you know? They've talked about that. I don't see it generating the amount of uh, gas that they do. A lot, there are a lot of farms that have done that, and it's an a enclosed area that the manure is sent into and as it cooks itself and ferments in there um, it makes gas the gas is then captured through a system that then runs uh, generators to power plant mm -hmm. some of them power the farm some of them have excess energy which they sell off I don't know enough about this to see how it by itself will generate enough heat and gas I think there would have to be some things added to it uh, you have to make it into a slurry to make it cook. You know, by itself, I don't know if there's enough to it to make it uh, cook. Yeah, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Supreme, Supreme. Forest products. And I want to go up and uh, take a tour of their, their dump line in mm -hmm. Southington. So, well, uh, there's quite a few of them around. I can yeah, tell you a I'll couple farms that have them. I'm going to check you know, them out. So, yeah, they're, they're uh, an anaerobic digester. Mm -hmm. right. right. So, Ralph. Yeah. <coughs> I was just going over the uh, pilot programs and the goals. Something bothers me there, and that is the, the recovery. They want to donate uneaten food to other students or people in need. Um, that is something I, that even today, restaurants uh, that used to give away a lot of the uh, bread and bakery stuff that will dry up to uh, food banks and stuff like that, but they've got to be eaten right away. And, you know, if, especially now with this uh, virus going around, if somebody has food on their plate, I don't think you want it to go to anybody else. I don't, I don't know if that's exactly what that means, Ralph. Okay. I it doesn't think, read right. I think that, would, a, I think that <laughs> might... Uh, unopened food or something. I would, I would hope something. it would be un... Yeah. yeah. I would hope that's what that but, means uh, there. Yeah, no, I wouldn't be giving some you know, they get somebody their, else half of somebody else's bologna sandwich. They, they get their meat, their meat, their meat and vegetables and, and yeah. uh, potatoes, and they get halfway through each, and then you're going to give that to somebody else. I don't think so. 
No. Uh, no, that definitely but wouldn't fly. That ought to be gotten back to so, the... Uh, so anyhow, so what you're approving is the resolution so this can proceed forward. It's a state thing. And, Second. Uh, okay, there you go. Any other discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? No. Good. Um, da, 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 what's this one? Oh, item number seven, to consider and act on motion to conduct a public hearing during the Board of Selectmen meeting on March 11th, 2020, regarding the repeal of Chapter 204 of the Town Charter for Dance Halls and Public Entertainment. Um, th this was proposed and, it, you know, it was started back in probably the 1800s. Uh, you know, you have enough of us, sir? <laughs> Very good. But I got to say, I mean, I really look forward to this every year. Um, <laughs> it it just is part of that little bit of history of Orange that, you know, just kind of shines through the dance halls. And right, so, so I don't know. I, I so think we should keep I, it. I don't know as we need a motion for, oh, yeah, we do. Yeah. We need a motion to add this to, uh, for public hearing at the March meeting. I already did, Your Honor. Did you? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Was there a second? Second. Thank you. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> to number eight, to consider and act on dates of the annual <clears throat> town meeting and budget referendum, provided everything works out yeah. properly, that would be on your to-do list. Um, I know I have it here somewhere. Jim? Yes, if I may, while you're looking, yes, um, I don't have any problem with the dates as proposed, but I'm thinking, do we really want to hold the annual town meeting, although it does have... Yes, Mitchell, oh. we are. Ann said you were going to ask exactly that. <laughs> she said it this afternoon. She said, when Mitch asked that, you remind him that it's you who said it. <laughs> Thanks, Ann. Got me pegged that my question is, should we be holding the annual town meeting in the town hall in this room yeah. as opposed to High Plains? Yeah. Yes. We yeah. discussed that last year because there were 18 people other than town employees there, and some of them were their dual resident and, and town employee. Mm -hmm. And this room is more than adequate for what, the, what has appeared for the last several town meetings. And everybody's welcome. We have an elevator. We have plenty of parking. We have stairways. And it makes life a lot easier for setting up. And quite honestly, the sound and the light down there for us stink. I mean, if somebody wants to sit there in that audience, a lot of them, you see them kind of going, like, they, they you know, they, people have a tendency to want to sit in the back rows. Nobody really wants to sit in the front. But then they can't hear. So if you have it here, it's in tighter quarters, and um, so that's what we thought. Let's go for it. <clears throat> Come on, Mitch. All right. Come on. Let's go for it. Try out. I hope we pack the room. <laughs> the date? I do, too. It's like a... Awesome. Thanks. That would be. But we only have the Amity as tentative. Yeah, Amity is tentative at this point. I mean, they always come before us. If they don't pass for some reason this time, um, then everything might change. But this is where we are at the moment. It was quite interesting listening to the um, finance chair from Bethany and they have a finance director up there now as well, and the chair of the Board of Finance from Woodbridge, Mr. Giglietti, the other night, and they um, really felt enough. And actually, one of the two referendum items in Woodbridge didn't pass for that bond that was just approved. Remember, on top of the budget increase, you'll see, a, I think, $100,000 in debt reduction in the budget falling off, but then the following year that new $6 million in bonding that was passed kicks in and it's $400,000 in debt service. So, you know, you gotta walk it out a little bit to think about that, you know. So, Woodbridge is definitely, Mr. G uh, Giglietti was definitely had enough. Their mill rate is over 40 and still moving north. Jim, no golf course. Yeah. <laughs> no housing. Jim, one thing I'd like you to look into, if you don't What's mind, that, is, to, is to check with the registrars to see if there's any conflicts. Not that there's nothing we, nothing we can do about it. I know Guilford is 
is very concerned. They're on the opposite end of things. Their their budget oh, referendum takes place in in the early middle part of April, and then the presidential primary is April 26th, one week before this particular budget referendum for us. So. The presidential primary is going to be on April 26th. The question is, do we have to be impounding the um, voting tally machines at all, and will there be, and for how long, and will there be any problem using the same, the same devices for the um, uh, the vote for Amity? And so the reason I ask that is because, as most of you know, even though it sounds silly, during a primary, no, during a during a primary. You have to have the same number of polling places as you would for an election. Now, we now have right. them all at High Plains. I don't expect it to be overrun with traffic. That's not the problem. The problem it's is the we'll, we'll be using all the machines, or maybe not all of them, but a good number of them. Just want to just check with the registrars, make sure they're aware of the dates. I'm sure they are, and making sure that there's no conflicts um, with utilizing the uh, machines know, in the fifth. It's probably May 5th. I think it's always been the first week of May. The problem is just this year, yeah, you've got you've got the presidential the primary. primary. It's not Terry. I think we have to talk to the registrars, make sure they're aware, and, and making sure that we have enough, enough of, 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 of the Don't tally machines. Don't we have machines. four tabulators? We have at least four tab. We probably we actually probably have double the amount because we have two at each each polling place. We should have we should have like Don't. eight. Come on. Yeah. Come on. A backup. There's a backup for every location. I believe so. So we should be all right. Oh, we should. Be, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. I just check, just check just with, just check uh, Fred on and that. Janice tomorrow on that, and see uh, what. But if it, let's, what action would you like to take tonight? There, then if we there, have to oh, the action it, we'll is to go ahead with it. There's there's, there's yeah. nothing we can do to stop it. I just want to make sure that okay. if there if there is an issue that they well, are looking, we, that we will have time to change that it. they're looking into it with the Secretary of State's office on anything else they got to do. Okay. That's all. So I'll take that as a motion. Yeah, motion to approve okay, the schedule. Seconds are made. Okay. Um, so I'll say the motion was made pending approval of the registrars. Um, if there's a conflict, it'll come back to us in March. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Staying unanimous. Very good. Okay. Uh, tax refunds in the amount of four thousand two hundred and three dollars and forty-eight cents. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. All right. That's, is that it? Let's see. And then we can go back to the yeah, we'll go back now to old business, which is the bottom of your first page, which is the item we took up last month. Um, item one, to consider and act on implementing fee for bulky waste at transfer station. <coughs> So last month you were handed out a bunch of uh, information. I asked you to save it. And Mitch had sent in, he emailed all of us with some concerns Mitch had. There was a document from a Daniel <coughs> Adams who emailed all of us with his some of his concerns. And then the one that was district, uh, Ann gave out tonight, Mrs. Lucarelli. Ernie and Vicki Lucarelli, Ralph's neighbors had some concerns. As you read theirs, you can see some of the uh, um, concerns of theirs are, are way off. Ralph had spoken with them. So, but that's where we are at the moment with all of that. Um, we discussed this last month and um, talked about what's going on there and close this and um, I still think it's a good idea I think Mitch uh, agreed that it is a good idea with me he he has some concerns as to uh, weights and charge and remember the fee part of it should we decide to implement this would be subject to change as we bid out that service because we have uh, dumpster, dumpsters provided by a vendor and we load the material and then we're charged uh, a, ton, a tonnage fee for disposal. So, you know, you could say a nickel 
15 cents, whatever, today. And I think, Ian, aren't they, isn't Sylvie working on those bids? Some of those bids are coming due. This one is. And, and so I think it's good to do it, but there will be a, you know, they will be subject to change mm -hmm. in the future because um, we're at the mercy of uh, vendors for these things. Um, moving forward, I think we should allow that to be updated um, as, you know, as needed. Um, I think that we need a, um, a minimum that we charge for, uh, as, you know, Mitch has put in here and uh, Mr. Adams, I think, talked to it a little bit. Um, I think that um, I think a hundred pounds is pretty good. A kitchen cabinet, I was told, weighs anywhere between uh, 26 pounds and 60 pounds, depending on what type of cabinet. Just the cabinet part, not a countertop on it or anything like that. So if you think about it, I mean, not many people are getting rid of those themselves in the back of their, you know, <coughs> Camry. And, uh, so I think 100 pounds is a considerable amount. We, we're we really getting hammered by um, a lot of contractors and people that will, will come that say, oh, it's from my house. Jerry had a, a person who's a contractor last week. Well, this is all from my house. Uh, no, you're in the business, you know, go on to scale. If all from his house was 1,200 pounds. You know, in one load. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so, I mean, these are the examples that, you know, we need to be aware of. You have uh, when a roofer is bringing in uh, material, it's considerably more. And there are other towns that are charging, and they got different prices. If you're A lot of them charge for everything, whether you're getting rid of a tire, you know, that's $5. If you're getting rid of... Asphalt shingles, it's $40 a ton or something. And, you know, the prices are all over the board. I think that becomes cumbersome on the staff down there. Um, I think uh, Jerry, who, you know, he's pretty much the one who runs the shed down there. He's probably watching this. He's awake. Um, I, I offered him to come tonight. No, nah, I, to I told him to stay home. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, he says, well, we'll fill out a ticket, and then they can bill them for it. No. The girls have too much trouble up there trying to collect from some of the uh, commercial coupon holders. So what they would do, they would come in. The attendant at the shed would make it. And this is my opinions I'm giving you. Then we'll open up. The attendant at the shed would look. If it looks like they got you know, a little bit of nothing there. And this is only for those of you at home, only bulky waste, which I call demolition material, construction material. Not leaves, not sticks, not your old Christmas tree, not scrap metal. Only the construction materials, demolition, old furniture that goes on the slab. Um, they would look. They know you're a resident or not. They've been doing a great job now for months checking they and they actually the other day they only had one person a woman from Milford who was quite surprised she couldn't dump her um, yeah so they're still coming uh, they would look if it looks like it's a reasonable little bit of nothing go ahead if it looks questionable they can send them over the scale the scale is accurate I've been told within 40 pounds or something like that so if it's questionable, you know, it's their judgment. They're not going to be, you know, you know, all the guys who work there and gals, um, they could say, yeah, okay, you know, don't worry about it. It's, it's the loads when you're there. We've all been there campaigning. We all go there to get rid of our material. And you see the trucks rolling in there and the dump trailers rolling in there. That's not, you know, John Carangelo bringing up, you know, stuff from his, you know, backyard kind of thing. It's commercial a lot of it you know <laughs> that's all and uh we'll set it on fire and uh <laughs> um 
So that's my thought. So they would leave their license at the shed, not their credit card, because some people say, well, they might have problems with okay. having leaving their credit card unattended. And I understand that. Okay. Having been what I already said, I've had identity theft three times. Uh, they go, they weigh, they go back on empty, they weigh, they pull up at the shed, they trade their credit card for their license. There's a, um, what do you call that, the, 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 the thing. The thing that you put the credit card in, the, the swiper, uh, or chipper, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there, they put it in, here you go, and it pays. If for some reason their card is declined, which is possible in some cases, and they've already dumped, you then have all their information, and you, you know, then upstairs would have to try, kind of pursue that attempt and do the best we can. But so those are my thoughts on it. John, I think, provided last month also the credit card um, data machine. Paul or Josh would take care of that down there. You know, Jerry was barking about it, but you know what? It's part of the job. Times change. And uh, I told you, that every time one of those dumpsters leaves, it's about 25 tons in a dumpster. There's about 50,000 in a dumpster. And on Saturdays, it's not unusual to fill two or four. Two is normal. Four is not unknown. Um, you know, and that's straight cost to us. Um, the cardboard, we fill up tons of cardboard and... Uh, uh, you know, I forgot our thoughts go out to Mr. Zamkoff and family. Uh, his wife passed away this week, uh, unfortunately, and Mr. Zamkoff has been our, carp our cardboard receiver for many, many years, and we get reimbursed for that. So, I mean, it doesn't bring us a lot, but it helps. Take It takes cardboard out of the stream, and now we're not paying to get rid of it like a lot of the other recyclables. So it actually is on the plus side for us. Um, whether large or small, it makes a big difference. Um, but so those are my thoughts. So now I'll open it up and let you go. Anybody? Okay. I'll start it off. I uh, <clears throat> I agree on truck tires or the tires. No, we're not would, doing tires yet. We're not going to do tires yeah. yet. We're just going to do bulky waste. Okay. Hey, I, the tires I included on the last time for the future. It's coming, right, Ralph, right. but I can only do one thing at a time. Um, I was going to propose let them have free for 250 pounds uh, per load, but their maximum allowable would be 1,000 pounds in a year. That's a lot of paperwork. Yeah. It's going to keep track. Of. You could set up an easy computer program for those guys to do it down there. You plug in a name, you plug in a, a license plate, and they have a record every time they come. And then you got a bill. They can they can pay by credit card. You got to catch them. Yeah. You got to catch on the if, way. If, okay. If they well, get them on the way out. Yeah. Well. Uh, and anything over 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 a thousand pounds is eighty five dollars a ton. That's I'm throwing that out. We can mm -hmm. go back and forth on it, but right. Just something to start with. Mitchell. And I and I I I did this. After reading Mitch's, yeah. so okay, <laughs> thanks, Ralph. And I, I, you know, as you know, I proposed the 250 pounds. So I'm glad you agree with that. Um, trying to count it each time, I think, as Judy just mentioned, is going to be a, a, a nightmare. You know, I think if people load up their car with stuff, if you know, if you're if you're getting rid of some shelving, if you're getting rid of something out of the basement, kind of thing, and you can get it in the car, you know, up to 250 is probably fair enough. But as Jim has mentioned. You know, pulling the trailers, filling the back of a, of a truck or, or a big back of a van with all kinds of stuff, you know, it's going to be more than 250. And I think it, that's a point, I think that's a, a, uh, a trigger point, if you will, to where we would, um, I feel comfortable charging people. And certainly, you know, if you're de demoing the bathroom or demoing the kitchen or doing the roof or putting on a porch and taking out the old one or whatever, whatever's coming down, uh, that's significant amount of bulky waste, and I think that we we have to, as Jim has mentioned, uh, start start uh, accounting for some of the costs that go with it. Um, I don't know if we'll decide anything tonight. The other major thing that I try to put out there, in uh, there's a number of things I put in my email. I don't need to read them all to you. Um, 
you know, and talking to people, it sounds like we probably need to up our, up our permit rate at the same time for the contractors. It seems to be the same amount for some time. Um, and, you know, Jim mentioned changing the rates. Well, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think when we get our quote from whomever, it's currently City Carding, but whomever we go with, it's gonna be effective July 1. It's February already. By the time we get this passed, if it's not tonight, probably by the next month, we need some time to publicize it. We need some time to get it out there. So I think that gives us several months and also will give us a firm rate because we do get, I believe, Jim, a firm rate per year mm -hmm. with, with a new contract. So we'll know for the next probably three years what our right. rate will be. Mm -hmm. And so we can probably set that now and maybe <clears throat> say, okay, this is good for three years. Or maybe if the rate goes up by a significant amount each of the three years, hopefully not, we say, okay, it's X you know, until June, June of 2021, and it's gonna be Y until June of 2022, and, and, and Z until June of 2023, and after that, we have to wait for the next contract. So that, that's basically my thought process. Um, you know, we, John put together a, a great synopsis of what the cost is. Um, I'm a little concerned that when figuring out what people are paying now, it really comes out to five cents a pound. If we go to 15 cents a pound, we are tripling the cost of what it's costing contractors or homeowners um, who have a significant amount of bulky waste to, to dispose of it. Uh, we just got to take that into consideration, and that's why I really feel that we should wait until we see the actual cost that we get from the quotes. We'll know that before July 1st, um, and then make a determination. On, we can make a determination what we're going to do, and then the, the, the price per pound we can probably figure out after we get the quotes in is, is my thought. Agreed. One thing I'll put it interject right there. Remember when I did speak to this last month, one of the thoughts of it's costing you just under a nickel currently. But the reason for the 15, you have you do have charges with the credit card machine and all of that. And I expect the consumption, the use down there to drop like it did with leaves once we put a fee on leaves. And this money would be identified separately so that you run for this year. Then the year, last time we did bulky waste in town, it cost the town $101,000. So then you would take the money from this year and do next year's bulky waste pickup with that revenue is what was my thought on it to do with the to do with the revenue mm -hmm. or you could use it as an offset we don't need money in the fund balance at this moment right now we're in good shape god forbid that should change but right now we are in we are extremely solvent we are the envy of a lot of communities so that was just my thought on that so if i can before john speaks one one thing i didn't do in my research and i'm hoping jim maybe you do know do we know what our neighbors Woodbridge, Milford, West Haven, what they're charging for this? Do we have any idea? It's, I don't know. I do. Um, I left the papers upstairs, but it's what I started to speak to. They're, they're all over the board. Okay. I mean, some of them, none of them are, either they don't know their costs or they're just subsidizing because, like, I, the one that sticks in my head and I said, why would they do that was roofing, was like, Forty dollars a ton. Well, shingle. It doesn't take a lot of shingles to make a ton. Off, off, and, and you know it's costing you eighty-five dollars. Why would you do it for half price? You know, if you're going to implement it, you have to know what the fees are. There are going to be some tonnages in here that are going to be free. So between the fee, the credit card fee, the hauler fee. And the town's operation of it, you have that's how you ended up with the triple because it's being consumed, and part of that is going to be offset by those that are our residents that are bringing in a few small items this week, and in a few weeks they might be cleaning out some. So those things have to be paid for somewhere. You know, that's that's my thoughts on it, John. Hi, Ralph. 
Um, <laughs> it, was it your thought process that we should wait to vote on this this evening and to find out what the actual numbers are? No, not necessarily. Uh, th I, I think we could we could vote on the concept, and but not institute the amount the amount at this point until we know what the, the the actual costs are. So, if the concept is and we want to get it, if we want to get it out there and say yes, we're going to start charging and yes, we're going to allow as I proposed and Ralph seems to agree with, you know, up to two fifty go goes through uh, Jim's how he's explained it, how you would. You pay by credit card at the way out. You know all that. We can get into a um, a concept. It's going to have to be all written out into some sort of procedure. I think at some point. Yeah, and, and signage. It, it, yeah, and it, and it would need signage too. Exactly. So I think, John, I don't have a problem if we can come to a consensus tonight in agreeing to the whole process. The only thing I feel uncomfortable about voting tonight on is the actual cost per pound or per ton, however you want to put it out there, um, because we don't know what it's going to cost us come July 1st. And I don't want to institute something on April 1st and have to change it July 1st. Let's let's do well, it. Well, that's, that's we, precisely. We, we might need that time, this window, to get the signage, to get the procedure, right. to get the unit installed, uh, make sure that the card swipe is up and running, et cetera, et cetera. There, there are some things that have to be done. And, and, and to be clear, these potential charges not only would affect our residents, but anybody that decides to do work for a resident, i.e. a general contractor who says, listen, I'm doing four houses and I'm going to take the shingles down in the town and deliver them. This, this affects everybody. Everybody. Okay. So, I mean, m my thought process is I would like to know more about what that price is going to be uh, because I'm concerned. I mean, we're, again, and I know we're a small town, and I get that we have expenses that we have to deal with, and, and ultimately we have to pay for it. But we're in the second largest taxed state in the country, and it's always trickling down to the residents. So if you're doing it to a general contractor, they're going to hit the re resident. And then if the resident says, well, you know what, I'll do the labor and I'll deliver it, then they're going to get banged that way. So. I, I don't know. I, I, I would just like to know. Um, I, I understand conceptually that it's something we're going to have to do, but I, I would really want to know what that price is and how really it's going to affect the people that use the transfer station. I mean, I think it's unfair for us to say, okay, hypothetically, let's use X amount of dollars and then find out that it's 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 too much. I mean, it, no matter well, what we, we do, that part we don't have yet. Right. That's the unknown at this moment. Right. Is that final dollar amount? You know right now that it cost you just about a nickel just for the disposal, for a can to come there, be dropped by a roll-off truck, to be picked up by a roll-off truck. You then have your own employees that are loading, are using a $150,000 payloader uh, with $1,000 or $1,500 worth of foam-filled tires in it and an hourly wage doing that part of it. I will never charge the residents for like household waste, you know, going up to the hopper, throwing their trash. You will never see me ever push for that. That absolutely would never happen. This is something that if you watch down there and see what happens, we do. We we're, 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 get, we're getting beat. Right. We are getting beat on that part. It's, right. it's, and the proof of it was the leaves. You know, Soundview started charging, a few others started charging. And I remember Phil saying to me, you got to charge for the leaves and you'll see it, it's going to drop. I don't know where the leaves went, but we started charging and our consumption went down by two thirds. They used to run out of room out in that back lot for the piles of leaves. Didn't happen the last couple of years now once there's that fee for contractors. So I don't know where they're going, but they're, you know, they're not coming there. So maybe they're still charging the people that they're cleaning up their yards a disposal fee that includes paying to get rid of them, but they're not coming to Orange. That that's proven, and I think I think you'll see the same thing happen with the with this. You know, I think we're going to have to invest in a few more gates and chains across some of our open space areas. Quite honestly, I think that you know will be also an issue. 
Um, but um, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, you know. Um, but, uh, and that happens all over the state, too, especially in the city. They find vacant lots and pull the lever and, and go. Um, but we don't have the new number yet. Okay. You're both correct on that. So at this point, we're really talking about is this a policy you want to institute? Is it, you know, something to move forward with? I, the only part where I really seem to differ with the two of you is on the weight, but I'm going to listen to hear what the other two members have to say here. So, Margaret. Overall, I support the fee increases um, for contractors. Once we have clarity on the rates, as Mitch yep. has suggested, and my main concern was in, in reviewing this material uh, that there be no negative impact on our average re residents. So Agreed. I think that needs to be very, very clear. I mean, I'm not sure whether 250 is um, is sufficient. Quite honestly, I, I have no way of yeah. being able to assess that. Mm -hmm. But I think it should be made very clear to our residents that this is not going to impact them delivering their household goods. And I think the right. you know the all the signage and everything that's put up needs to be extremely clear so that our residents don't feel that this is another tax on them. I right. agree. Right. Um, boy, if we could all go, go to work in Hartford, <laughs> yeah. we'd be a lot better off, wouldn't we? Um, um, I agree, and I will work on that. Signage is very important to me. Mitch has done a lot of signage down there for with the different recycling because I feel there has to be highlights on certain words and yeah. certain things yeah. in there, so right. it yeah. pops. Yeah. Um, so I agree with you on that. And I do not want it to impact. It will impact. If you're getting a new remodeled kitchen in yes. your house, sure, sure. or you're getting a new deck, yes. or something like sure, that, sure. that's tonnage, yeah. and no, it's an I'm investment in your home. But if it's you're getting rid of some car. old stools yeah. or in a lounge chair or uh, you know, uh, bookcase. a bookcase, some odds and ends like that, no, that okay. that should be. There you go. Um, I agree. Okay. Uh, this is pre this is for those. Like I said, a pickup came in with not a full load, but a load. It was 1,200 pounds. You know, it doesn't take a lot to to put that on a pickup truck pretty right. quickly. Right. So so we're in agreement. Judy. Okay. I I do agree that we should start charging. Um, I I think the 250. Probably sounds like a better number than 100 pounds. Um, I'm just curious to go and see what a 250 looks like as opposed to a 100. But as opposed I, to the chance of exactly, and sit with Jerry for a while. <laughs> oh um, boy! <laughs> Good luck, Jerry. I'll bring donuts. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm, you know, I, I will. I will go down and stop and yak with Jerry for a bit and stuff. You know, because he's had, he's been making that decision kind of all along. You go on the scale, you just go dump. Let's let's see if he's saying that the people that he's pushing over to the scale, are they the ones with like 200, 300 pounds and up? Or is it the ones that are, he looks at the stuff and he says, yeah, and it's only like 100 pounds. I, I really... He's a pretty I, good. I, he's a pretty good judge. That's what I. I really would like to just have a quick yak, you know, and um, and kind of check on that, and then make a decision. And again, we can start making that decision and say we want to start at uh, say 200, 250, and and find out that we want to adjust that after a year. I think that's something that mm -hmm. we could readdress. Um, but I do think get the get the actual price so that we have something that we can hang our hat on. You know, we can say because this, this, this costs that, and that's our price, and um, the signage, and, and definitely so that everybody's comfortable knowing when you go in there that, you know, you're getting a big construction job, then you're going to have to just kind of pay a little bit to get rid of that stuff. So I think we should definitely do it. So Jim, am I out of school by saying that it seems like all of us agree that there should be a charge with... Um, using the transfer station for, for um, things that are in excess of potentially 250 pounds. Um, how do you want us to handle a, a motion or, a, uh, or action tonight n knowing we don't, well, A, like Judy's question is, well, it, should it be 100, should it be 250? Then the next question that 
Margaret has asked us, well, actually, what should be the number, right? I mean, how, I how should we, because I, I, I think conceptually, we all agree that there should be a charge. I and maybe we leave I it think, at that. I think everybody is in agreement on that. And I think all of you, I was the only one who said the 100 pounds. Try the 200. I'm okay with it. If you think the 250 pound number is the number that you people feel is the good number, I'll go with it. I'm okay with that. I'm just trying, I have to get the guidance because I have to implement it and, you know, uh, work with them down there at the transfer station to do it. And I don't see that as a problem. Uh, the only part of it we don't have, um, I would say that you would put an implementation, implementation date of uh, July 1, 2020, um, the 250 pound, about 251 pounds approximately, uh, or more at the discretion of the, um, or under the purview of the uh, uh, transfer station attendants. Um, if they're in question, they can send somebody over the scale. It's as simple as that. You know, it's not a big deal. And uh, um, that way they can start with the lining up of the credit card machine, signage, et cetera. And uh, I would leave the motion with uh, uh, fee to be determined uh, upon completion of the bid process. Uh, for this material. That's all you have to do. So moved. Yeah. <laughs> I'll second. Still not getting it. I mean, that that's fine. I mean, it, it's if that's what you want, that's that's fine. Um, well, I think it's good to get it started. I do. Most of the places are charging for tires now, too. Right. Um, yeah. You know, it's kind of strange. When you get new tires on your car, whether you go to town fair or Costco or wherever, they charge you a disposal fee. Well, you want us to get rid of the tires and they're gonna put it on the bill. Okay, because they all go to Lakin pretty much over in West Haven. And, uh, but a lot of people, no, I'll put them in the trunk, I'll take them. <laughs> Number one, why do you want to take them home unless they're usable tires? Because they are generally pretty crappy. So unless you have a need for them like us where we cover the silage with them or something, why do you want them? Um, and it's just one more thing that you have to get rid of. But there's people, oh, I'll take them to Orange. I can get rid of them there. Yeah. You know, most of them do not take rims. But see, rims we can put down in the scrap metal, yeah. and rims we get paid for. You know, if you put them in the scrap metal pile, that's and not, not they do. Yeah. But the, so that's a, another thing. So what then you have to do is have them take the payloader, and you squash it down this way, and it collapses the rim. The tire comes yeah. off. And then you take the rims and throw them down in the scrap metal pile, which goes to Chase Chase Waste, I think, gets our metal right now. Um, but anyway, yeah, we used to use a wood splitter. Um, but that's, um, so that's what I have on it. So that's your motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So this will come back to us once more. It'll, it'll probably be. It, uh, yeah, it'll be John, John and Mitch. Um, it'll, actually, it'll be decided. The night that we have the bid the from that, we'll, yeah. we'll know it, yeah. and we'll put it on the agenda as a item for that night after the bids are approved. Good. Okay. So, so with that, I don't know what the schedule is for the bids, but I would try to get that either. sooner rather than later. Sylvie's working on them. That because because, because yeah. the more time we can give people to know, not just that we're doing this, which we just voted on, but also to let them know what the cost is going to be, the more time we can give that, the better yeah. we off we are at that, too. Yeah, no, and that's so going to be a waiver for an up to 250 pounds yeah. per acre? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, no, no. We don't have that capability. <laughs> Committees, pension board, Selectman Goldblatt. We meet next week. Okay. That always seems to fall that way. Uh, capital planning, select Minoki. Well, we finished our charge for the year, made our presentation to the Board of Finance uh, last Friday afternoon. We uh, presented 22, 21 projects worth $1.1 million. In fact, the number came out to be $1,100,000 and one million. 
$111,000. Don't worry, my pen hasn't got to it yet, but it's coming. <laughs> you don't find that very often. But uh, we had, and our budget is usually around $500,000, but the Board of Finance wanted all the projects listed and uh, in priority. The first, the first uh, to hit the 500,000 was 11 projects, and w the project that was number 10 didn't make the 500, so we put the 11th project in, and that made it 673,000. But that was one of the three big ticket items. They, we had to, uh, with the uh, second floor uh, fire, fire system at Silverbrook failed two years ago. And the insurance company, okay, that's fine. they're not, John thinks he got the check, for, Sir Ferrelli thinks he's got the check for it. He'll probably, he'll probably uh, email you now, Mitch. Uh, <laughs> but they give, they're giving us a hard time on it because we yeah, haven't same. done much to prevent a second fire or a second flooding. We put a patchwork thing in there and they want to, right now Public Works wants to go with a new system that's a dry system that will go up there and that will prevent um, a, a, a flood because it freezes up there because of the way the building's built. So that was um, 200 and, I'm sorry, it was 160,000. And then we had another major project, which was the um, steam pipes underneath High Plains. That was the big one. That was 225,000. And those two plus nine others made up the 673. Yeah. But um, everybody, our, our committee did it. Uh, we all worked together, talked about each one, and we all came to unanimous decision on the priorities and uh, how to present. Board of Finance was pleased with the, the projects, what we did with them. We did site visits at the police station. Um, they had a number of smaller projects. We, we, went, we did not climb the, go into the tunnels at High Plains. No. We did go to the Board of Ed and looked at some things they wanted. Um, so it was, it was a good, good year. We got, we got done in time and uh, we were the last on the list too, so they were ready to go home. <laughs> John, did you have a question? Yeah, I was just going to ask Ralph if one of the thoughts for this calendar year was the tennis courts, pickleball. There's a huge Not contingency. Not pickleball, but they're being redone and being resurfaced as they are. And they can be lined for pickleball. Will they line them for pickleball I don't for the seniors? A lot of the. I'm not worried I, about I know, I'm, at I'm, this moment. I'm hearing that too, John. I mean, yeah. A lot of people, yeah. That's good. Go play in Milford. They got eight courts. I looked at them yesterday. Um, I actually was. Well, let's finish this and then. Uh, I a couple things to tell you. Um, bond construction oversight at this time, I think, is pretty well set. We've had no meetings, so there's no report. Right. <laughs> okay, and person waiting to be that, disbanded. <laughs> not, not yet. Oh, no, 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 no. At uh, and personnel hadn't met yet. Uh, Margaret's on the appointments now, so that's official there that she's on that. So we do have. A meeting we have to plan for a few items on that um, okay and then I will I, in the appointments I, before I go further um, you'll see that I did finally get to uh, the playground committee um, and everybody signed up and it's a good committee there of uh, it's a mixed uh, committee of uh, people so I get nervous Jude no, this, this cups are like, they're live. <laughs> uh, but anyhow so that I'll tell you so the playground committee as proposed was uh, uh, Travis Ewan who's a landscape architect um, Marissa Asterisi who is an assistant principal in the, I believe the New Haven school system um, Charles Flynn, Orange Board of Education is why I put him on. Um, Blair Pierce, um, young mom, Ed Vaughn's niece. Uh, for those of you who remember Edgar Vaughn, uh, she's raising her young family here in town. And Lynn Plaskowitz is the grandmother 
on the committee. She said she would be on it, plus she's a link to Park and Recreation since she is the admin at Park and Rec. So I made it a five-member committee. Um, once it goes through here, I, we spoke with all of them to make sure everybody was in line. I will call the first meeting of them and kind of give them their charge and their legs under them. And then they will hold some public meetings and start to feel out for playground, different companies, et cetera. Uh, but so that next phase of that ball that they're going to handle is starting to move forward. <coughs> Um, with going with what John just questioned there, John, there's enough extra room down there when we had that land cleared that I'm kind of looking for some potential courts down there on what would be the west side of it. When you go into the parking lot, they would kind of be the first thing you would see on that side. The playground will be up from that. On the other side now, where that road is going to come through, yep. that will come up through eventually above the playground. There'll be a parking area there. Playground would be to the right of it is what I envision. The piece to the left, I'm going to talk to um, one of our contra contractors to get that left side leveled and just put grass on it. We didn't get to put any grass in there in the fall because winter came too quick and then winter went on vacation. Uh, um, we'll grass that side for future use. People can use it for other issues at this time. Um, I'm going to charge this committee to go look around at some other places. That's why I had to go to Milford yesterday, and on my way back, I swung into uh, Eisenhower just to look at where their playground is, their pickleball courts. Um, uh, their splash pad, the building, they have a very small little building by their playground, which was built first. Then there's a larger building built further back on the other side of the splash pad. Uh, people love splash pads. I am not in New England because they are a maintenance nightmare because of freezing. If you don't get all the water out, all the under, under cement piping and everything, it's a disaster. But we will have room over at that area for some courts I'm looking at in the future and some other grass area and the playground area, et cetera, et cetera. So that's probably where that'll come. The courts down at High Plains, um, I'll be coming to you with a proposal and it will probably be using, I think, LOSIP money to resurface those courts that exist there currently. Hopefully that will solve that. I have some thoughts, but we'll get to it. Mitchell. I honestly wasn't able to follow all your lefts and rights and everything going on there. I know, but, I, and but, I apologize because you know what? But but I do want to look at it, and I I, I know yeah. you I know you are. But one thing that was brought to my attention that I think is important, and maybe you can discuss it with this playground committee, is you know currently we you come in you know for, for Wolf Park, mm -hmm. um, pretty much meander through the woods, get to the big parking lot, and then if you go to the lacrosse fields, you kind of move to the right mm -hmm. and go straight through. Where you've, the area that's been cleared mm -hmm. is to the right of where that current road is. Correct. Okay. The thought process being that when we build the playground, we maybe want to take that road and have that road continue to meander to the right and then cut back in towards La Crosse and then keep the playground to the left of the road so that the playground and the soccer fields are not bisected by the road. Because you have kids going from soccer fields to playgrounds, oh, playground to soccer fields. That, that sounds like that, Mrs. Lingall talking. Well, um, <laughs> more than one person said that yeah, to me. It's probably the, not going to happen that well, way. Just thought and I'd no, bring it. And let me explain say to it you. now before it's too I late. Know, no, that's all right. My thought on it is the playground's not going to be anywhere near that road. The playground, there's going to be another roadway. Now, you understand where you're going through that wall and going to the left to lacrosse. Mm -hmm. Got it? Mm hmm. The other road, there's that big oak tree I left there. The other roadway is going to go in past that oak tree, and it'll probably have to bend towards the right there. The parking area will be out there. It's not going to be right over by that roadway. There'll be a parking area there, and then the playground is going to be to the right of that roadway. To the left of it will be other grass area for future use, which I don't have a determination on yet, but we need to get some grass on it just to prevent erosion and all of that sort of thing. 
but where the playground will be is going to be over here, and the road that goes to La Crosse is going to be over here. They're not going to be in the same area, and I have hopes with time of a roofed pavilion, something like Woodbridge has, that you kind of see it when you go down center road before you get to the ball field, over in the woods, back behind some pine trees. It's just a post and beam open type of pavilion with a green okay. kind of metal roof. It's a nice building. Because when your parents there with children and all, they need an area to be out of the sun as well, in the sun. Then, with time, we will apply for you know more grants and stuff as this goes along. And I'd like to see a building there that would be, it will have uh, water fountains for kids to get drinks. And the new water fountains will have the bottle filler in the back of them. Yep. That's one thing. There'll probably be a couple restrooms there and thing, things along that line. But, you know, it's no problem. It just all takes money. Yep. And uh, so <laughs> those are some of the thoughts. But this is where it's going to start to evolve uh, um, as it goes. But the playground... And it will be fenced. Um, Milford has a nice kind of a black decorative fence around theirs, and it's all gated so that, you know, when you go in with your right. children, uh, you know, in there to play, close the gate. Mm -hmm. And uh, that way, if a child decides to wander here and there, as children do, the gates should be closed so that, you know, and theirs is right by North Street. The yeah. playground mm -hmm. is right up at the top by a parking lot in North Street. So... Um, it will be a, you know, fenced area around it. And, uh, you know, it's got to evolve with time. Yep. But that road that is a concern to me, but it will be over here and they'll be over here. In the event with time that that grass area there gets used for more kid programs, there should be chain link with a couple gate size openings in it along that side keep both children, dogs, and balls from running out into the traffic pattern. I agree with you 100%. I don't want to see any kid get hurt. No. Um, but there's a whole bunch of considerations. <clears throat> and, you know, it's been sitting there for so long, we have to be patient and let's let it evolve with time. Milford, theirs is really, really nice down there with what they've done with their little playground and all. So, so we got some stuff coming on it. Okay. All right. Now we need to uh, go into an executive session only because it's not because it's technically strategy or anything but due to unfortunate circumstances and it's a little bit sensitive so I don't think we need to uh, discuss it out okay. out and out so we'll have a motion to go into executive session at 845 and and this shouldn't take very long at all we'll holler up the stairs for you you didn't lock the, you got your key okay because I pulled the door behind me Knock on the door, ask them to shut off their, uh, the sound and all there. Okay, we had a discussion about some insurance issue uh, while we were in executive session. We've now come out at 9.20. And um, is there a motion to be made or would somebody like me to formulate the motion? <laughs> okay. <laughs> The motion, the motion is as requested by the finance department for uh, two individuals who uh, should have, would have been continued on insurance and due to um, a situation, um, we needed to act on this to affirm that, that they would be Continued on our insurance till age 26 or until they find employment that provides insurance. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Is there anything else to come before this board? Okay. We are adjourned at 922. Thank you.